How's it going, everybody? It's Ryan. I'm Dylan here. And today we're going to be talking to y'all about the best Mustang for your budget. Now, the certain budgets we chose are going to be ranging from five thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand. Then the last one is twenty-five and up. So we did have a few parameters and rules on choosing the different cars. Um, Ryan's going to go ahead and explain those parameters. So the first rule is you can't go over your listed budget. The second rule is going to be good mileage. So this might upset a lot of you Fox Body guys, but this is going to be a 1994 and up year of Mustang. Obviously, it's gotta be a V8. So the next rule is gonna be uh, performance is gonna have a slight edge over the interior and the exterior. We're basing it more off of performance rather than looks. The next thing, the potential of the engine will be looked at. And lastly, aftermarket mods won't be looked at. So we're gonna go ahead and get working on our list. We'll be back out here once we're done and complete with our list. <laughs> start off with the $5,000 budget. What did you pick for the $5,000? All right, so for the $5,000 budget, I went with the two-valve GT, the 99 to 04 Mustang GT. For the $5,000 range, you shouldn't be expecting anything perfect, but uh, also you're not gonna be expecting something really old and ragged out. Probably gonna be looking at 60 to 90,000 miles around there for um, a $5,000 two-valve GT. All right, so what did you choose? So with mine, I chose the 94 to 98 a GT. For me, I chose it mainly because of the, the year. Uh, you could probably find one a little bit lower miles, a decent mile car. I feel like this GT will get you the best bang for the buck for $5,000. So both pretty much identical cars. So I think the $10,000 uh, minimum will be better. So with saying that, let's move on to the $10,000 mark. A lot of people are gonna give me a lot of flack for this, but I did choose the two valve GT. I chose it because, you know, if you're gonna be going with three valve, uh, for that price right now, I've been looking a lot um, and the price on those In my opinion, it's not worth buying a three valve for that type of money and you say well Why would you buy a two valve for that amount? Uh, well, with this price point, you're pretty much getting this two valve with next to no miles on it So I would rather get a, a two valve with no miles brand new two valve than get a used three valve But that's just my opinion and I have a feeling that you chose the three valve? Well, you're not wrong. For my 10,000, yeah, I did choose the three valve, you know. I just feel like around that price range, you can't really get any better of a car, you know. People give the two valve crap for the interior and it being kind of old school, but the three valve, they kind of made some modern revisions. 100% nicer interior in my opinion, really roomy. Also, power. The three valve makes um, a lot more power than the two valve. And most likely you're gonna win if you're in a three valve rather than two valve. So let's go ahead and move on to the $15,000 slot. I'll let Dylan go first here. Yeah, so for my $15,000 range, I chose the 9901 Cobra. That engine in that car had a 4.6, um, pretty similar to the Mach 1, almost exact, other than a set of different cams. The Cobra also has some different seats. Um, in my opinion, they're a little nicer than the Mach 1. But yeah, for $15,000, I feel like the 9901 Cobra would be a pretty good deal. So for my pick, I had to go with 03 to 04 Mach 1. Uh, you can call it a little biased, but I have to agree, you know, with Dylan as well, because Cobra and the Mach 1, you know, kind of similar cars, you know, pretty much similar build. In this case, I would pick the Mach 1 just because uh, you could probably find, you know, a Mach 1 maybe a, a tad bit cheaper than the Cobra. If you're really looking hard out there, you know, on the Auto Trader, you could find yourself a good priced Mach 1 with low miles for around 15000 So that's why I picked that. All right, so next we're gonna move on to the 20000 The car I chose is gonna have to be the 11 to 14 5.0. And I agree with that too. I also chose the 11 to 14 5.0. Uh, you can't really beat the 5.0 at that price point. You can find one all the way up, you know, from 16 to, you know, low 20s, um, but I think it really fits in there. You, it's pretty unbeatable in my opinion. Yeah, I can't agree with you more on that one, you know. The new technology in the 5.0 the price range, I think it's just a no-brainer at that price range. Right, 420 horsepower, yep. you know, updated interior, yep. a 5.0 engine, uh, you can't really beat it. Obviously, you know, you can get some lower mile 01 Cobra or Mach 1, um, but the power is not there as it would be with the 5.0. So that's why we chose that for the $20,000 slot. Now we're moving up to the $25,000 spot. This is uh, moving up there in price, so you're going to get a pretty good car mm -hmm. out of this. Uh, you can't really go wrong, I guess, with what we're going to choose. So my choice would be a 13 to 14 Boss 302. Uh, the reason why I chose that, after we just chose, you know, the 
5 -0. you could say it is a 5 -0. well with the boss 302 you're getting you know updated interior you're getting the boss 302 stitched on the seat you're getting an updated engine it's actually the, pretty much the same as a gen 2 motor that you're getting with the s197 platform and the engine has a lot of potential and it's an na motor 444 horsepower uh, you can boost it if you wanted to but all around it's just a you know perfect car for that price range you're getting the name and you're also getting the power to back it up what did you pick for that one dylan so on this one the 25,000, i chose an 0304 cobra so a big part of this reason of me choosing this is probably because it's one of my dream cars and i really like those cars um but at the end of the day, nothing beats the name, the history, and like just everyone knowing about the 04 Cobra, you know? It's a great car, has a lot of potential. Now, it is an older car for the price range, but I believe it will beat out some of the 5.0s on the road today. All right, now we're gonna get into the big boy category. This is the 25,000 and up. Um, we didn't wanna go too crazy with ours. Uh, we gave ourselves a $50,000 limit, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that y'all have to have that limit. In fact, Leave a comment down below. Let us know y'all's list. If y'all would change it up, um, whether you liked our list, whether you didn't like our list, let us know down in the comments. But without further ado, uh, what did you pick for your your car, Dylan? So I picked the 2011 to 2014 GT500. Now I know the 11 to 12 GT500 is a little different than the 13 and 14, but I just decided to put the two together just because they are in the similar price range, 25 and up. You can probably get. 11 to 12 for a little lower obviously i know the 13 14 has more power from the factory but i feel like the 11 to 12 has more potential for mods but either way you can't go wrong with the gt500 completely agree with everything you said right there Thank um you. the car i picked would be the gt350 and the gt350 alone all right um i feel like the car is you know great platform you know if you want to keep it na it's an na monster pretty much it's a great platform if you want to boost it too. Just a great car in my opinion. I'm usually not a very big track guy, but you can track this car, no problem. And you can take it to the drag strip, no problem. So it's a great all around car for, you know, for that price. So yeah, that's our opinions on what we would get for those certain price ranges. Um, like Ryan said, you know, our list shouldn't be exactly the same as your list. We all have our own opinions and we all have our points. So if you guys want to comment your list and your opinions on what we thought go ahead we'd, be, we'd love to hear it give us a subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet leave a like on the video yeah we'll catch you on the next one